Hello everybody, this is Brandon from Brandtech, and today we're going to show you how to emulate GameCube and Wii games on your computer really easily with no lag, and how to set it up with a Xbox 360 controller. Now, it's pretty simple to do. You're going to just need a couple of things. One, an Xbox 360 controller and a way to connect it to your computer. Pretty simple stuff. Two, you're going to need the Dolphin program, and you're also going to need an ISO, which is the file for the game that you want to play. In this case, in here, I have the ISO for Animal Crossing, an old GameCube game. Now, you're going to want to go to dolphin-emu.org, link is in the description, and click Download Dolphin 5.0 for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Once you click this, it's going to take you to this page, and you want to download 5.0 for Windows or Mac, depending on what you want to use. Uh, they should be an almost similar process. You just click the button, and it starts downloading. Now, I've already had it downloaded, so we're not going to worry about that right now. So here is what you will download. You're going to double-click on it. You want to say yes, that it has permissions, so it can install itself on your computer. Select whatever language you want. I speak English, so we'll do English. Hit you agree to this public license. Have it install both of these things. They're necessary for it to want for it to run well. Pick where you want it to install. The default for me is fine, but you can of course browse and pick anywhere you want. Hit install. And it should only take a couple of seconds. It's gonna install a whole bunch of files. So just kinda Wait for it. Shouldn't take too long. You can see the ex or the actual application popped up right here. And boom, done. So it's done completing the setup. So hit finish. You can delete the old executable. We do not need it anymore. And now you can run the Dolphin program. So this is the Dolphin program. It's fairly simple and I can go over the setup to make it pretty easy for you. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is check your config settings, and you're going to want to change some stuff if it makes sense for you. I can go over what some of the settings mean. So enable dual core and enable idle sk skipping. We'll just speed up like it says. It's pretty self-explanatory for what to do. If it says if it speeds it up, it'll tell you it speeds it up. I would leave most things unrecommended because it just works well that way. Interface, I wouldn't change anything here. Audio, wouldn't change anything here unless you have a different audio backend you'd like to use, but X Audio too, which is the default, should be totally fine. Here's some settings if you play in different languages. So for GameCube, you can pick the language you want the system in. You can tell what's in the different slots. You can say, I have a memory card in slot one, a microphone for the GameCube in slot two to try to basically trick the emulation into thinking you have things plugged in. I would leave a memory card in uh, as one of the options, which it gives you by default, so you can actually save games. With the Wii, pick your aspect ratio. 16 by 9 is like a normal monitor. A monitor. 4 by 3 would be something more square. System language, once again. If you want a USB keyboard, which or, or inserting an SD card, I would leave these unchecked. Paths, we'll go over in a second. And advanced is, I would leave, because it is really not necessary for 99% of systems. So there's config. Graphics is an interesting one because you can actually change how nicely these games look and make them even nicer than they were on the GameCube and Wii itself. So for backend, you can choose OpenGL, Direct3D11, Direct3D12, Software Wanderer. I leave it at OpenGL. It works beautifully for me. Uh, full screen resolution, you can leave to auto. Aspect ratio, you can leave to auto. You may always change these if you want. Enhancements is pretty cool. You can change the internal resolution. Now, I would leave it on native at first and make sure it runs well. You do need some decent graphics hardware. Nothing crazy, but something nicer. You need dedicated graphics for sure to be able to run this smoothly. And if you have something really nice, like I'm running a 980 Ti, you can push it up even higher, potentially to 5K. I generally leave it at native because I like the way it looks, but you can change it to whatever you want. Anti-aliasing is really nice because this will get rid of all the jaggy edges and you can pick up to eight times SSAA, which will make it look really sharp. I use that on some Wii games that I've played because it makes it look really nice. Anisotropic filtering, same thing. You can add more or less, and this changes the different graphic settings. Uh, it will make it more 
intensive, both of these anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering and pretty much everything will make it more graphically intensive. So I would start with all of it off and slowly work your way up to having more and more things. You can hover over them to have more uh, information in the description down below in that little box. So this one enhances the visual quality of textures at weird viewing angles, and it might cause problems. So if you turn it on and it's a problem, turn it off. I would leave all this the way that it is. Uh, Stereoscopic 3D is if you have a 3D TV or in a game that actually displays in 3D. I've never actually touched this before. I don't think you'll find much use there. Hacks I don't use, but if you can add some interesting stuff. I don't really touch it, though. And advanced, I don't really mess with. You can mess with it if you feel like it. Otherwise, I wouldn't touch it. So those are those settings. And then controllers is the important one because you need to configure your actual controller to work. So I will admit Dolphin can be a bit fiddly with controllers. I don't know why entirely, but I'm going to plug in my Xbox controller. So my Xbox controller is plugged in. I'm going to hit configure for the GameCube controller since I'm playing a GameCube game right now. And I have two options. I have direct input for keyboard and mouse and X input for the gamepad. I'm going to be using a gamepad since I think it makes sense. Now your screen is might not look like this when you start off. But what you need to do is you want to click on a button and then push the corresponding button on your gamepad. So if I click button A here, I want to push the A button on my keyboard. If I want A to be the B button on my controller, click that and it'll change. So you basically will go through these clicking on each of them and changing the setting. So here, so if I click here, it's waiting. Sometimes you need to hit refresh. It wasn't actually detecting my controller. It's weird. I, like I said, it's a bit fiddly. So I refreshed and now it's working because if it A, it's waiting for a button press. And you can see A, B, X, Y, all right down here as I'm pushing those buttons on my controller. Z, I map to the right bumper. So you can copy my mappings here uh, if you'd like, because I think they work pretty well. Sometimes I'd leave these modifiers blank as things on your keyboard. I don't really see them too necessary, but they can be nice to have. But you just simply go through pushing all the buttons for the sticks. You push up and you push your left stick up, down, push your left stick down, and so on. Same thing with the triggers. I would set everything here. So L and L analog should be set to the L trigger. R and R analog should be set to the right trigger because that lets you, if you look here, I can push it down a little bit. But once I hit a threshold right here, which you can actually move up and down as you can see, then it will actually fully push the button. So the old GameCube controller, you could slightly push down the controller, but it also clicked at the bottom, and that's simulating that. You can turn on your rumble motors, add your D-pad, so up, down, left, right, simply click it, hit whatever direction you want to be up, which would probably be up. And then you can save these profiles if you'd like, but it'll save automatically once you hit OK. Now, for the final thing, it says here, Dolphin could not find any GameCube or Wii ISOs, Double click here to set a game's directory. You want to double click here, and it's going to open up your drive. I'm going to head to my desktop, and we open my ISOs folder, and hit select, and boom. Now this is here. So now the game has been found by Dolphin. Uh, one final thing that I forgot to mention is in controllers, there's also the emulated Wiimote, which you would do just the same way as before. This one's a little bit more complex as it does mouse tracking. I would personally actually add a real remote with Bluetooth. I don't actually have Bluetooth on this computer, so I can't show you that. But you would connect your Wii controller to Bluetooth on your computer. And it should just show up here. If it's not, you can check continuous scanning and it'll look for it. And then you can play a Wii game with a Wii, real Wii remote, which is pretty nice. So once you want to play a game, just double click on it. And as you can see, in just a second, the game boots up. It'll have some settings that you can read. It'll have performance data. You want everything to be running at 60. If it's not running at 60, if it's not hovering around 60, you're probably going to want to lower your settings. And boom, we are now playing Animal Crossing and my controller is working so I can press start. And I can play. So there we go. There's how to play GameCube and Wii games on your computer pretty easily. Thank you for watching. 
If this video helped you, and now you can play GameCube and Wii games on your PC, leave it a like. If it wasn't helpful at all, please dislike it so I know, and leave me some constructive criticism down below. And finally, please subscribe if you'd like to see more, and comment below for any other tutorials you'd like to see. Thank you, and have a great rest of the day.